oh, goodness. You know, you're sitting there and it's like, all right, going through all of my progressions and trying to see, okay, first off, I apologize for 901, uh, trying to make sure that everything was in line. But yeah, it, it, as we figured, that happens once a week, at least once a week, where I'm trying to sit there. Have I hit every button? Have I figured everything out? Is it there? Is it not? And the odds are today it was not. So yeah, so we start with a slate instead of with my face. Soccer's morning show. Uh, John here, you there. Thanks for hanging out. And it is Tuesday Thoughts. Uh, as we were getting into the uh, discussion yesterday, I, I guess the question remains, how many of you got up this morning? We'll be getting into that as we go. And we will discuss what happened. We'll go over the grades. We'll go over what you thought. We'll see if you saw the highlights. You know, apparently the MVP was the post, according to some. U.S. makes it through into the knockouts as the two coming out of group with the draw with Portugal. And the, the road has gotten somewhat tougher. So we'll get into that this morning. Like I said, we'll go over all the grades and we'll go over what you thought. I've put out the bat signal. I've put out the bat signal. So we'll see what happens because once again, you're looking at what? One o'clock in the morning? Local time. So if my math is correct, uh, Nix is already saying they're not going to win a medal. Book it. That's what we're here for this morning. Go ahead and let me know what's on your mind. Lay it all out there. Uh, <laughs> Michael, I <laughs> don't know. We'll find out what Bam has to say in short order. Michael, it's glad he didn't get up for that mess. I'm wondering if Bam is happy now, considering that Bam said that they needed to finish second in the group. So Bam got his – Bam's uh, prognostication slash wish – was correct. So bam, lay it all out there. You've got a you've got a team that you needed to finish second in the group, finish second in the group. There's your answer. Nick's got up early and said it was not worth it. So this will be obviously a part of the discussion this morning, if not most of it. And we've got this. We've got the wrap up of League's Cups uh, group stage. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Here's your here's your smack. Bam. Now to get a ticket to see the U.S. get knocked out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that's uh mm-hmm. Yeah. I figured this was where we were going this morning. So uh and we'll just uh I'm gonna let it ride. I'm just gonna let it go, and I figured that uh yeah, bam would be like this. <laughs> Yeah. 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 That's where that's what I figured. Yeah, and, and Bam, you're probably not the only one after this morning. Bam says if the USA play like that, I can see him being knocked out, to be honest. Some changes were made going into the morning. Lynn Williams in. And Rose Lavelle was there. But uh Lavelle will now not be available for the first knockout because of the yellow card that she picked up. So yellow card accumulation is uh, right there for you. They advance to the uh, World Cup knockouts. Connor O'Halloran of the four-letter referred to it as a nervy draw. Frustrated by a well-organized Portugal team that almost snatched victory in stoppage time. Ana Capeta hit the post. We've talked about that. Had it gone in, you would have seen the USWNT crash out of the tournament. USWNT will face the winner of Group G in Melbourne Sunday, likely to be Sweden, which needs just a point against Argentina to confirm top place in the matchup. Netherlands progressed with a 7-0 victory over Vietnam, which is what we figured was going to happen. That Vietnam was going to be the side that folks were going to try to put the numbers on. Vietnam, I think that they just they hit their wall. And you end up with a seven on the board in the last match for the Netherlands. Lynn Williams, chance after 13. Pereira with the save. Controlled possession in the first half. Had better chances. Couldn't find a finish. Scoreless at the break. 
Rose Lavelle's yellow in the 38th. Early in the second half. Interesting morning four card. Morning Will. Will, if we play like that versus Sweden, we'll be screwed. Early in the second half, and at some point, I know that we're going to have a a roadshow version of the soccer for USPOD with Bart down there at the World Cup. But uh, malfunctioning sprinkler causes a fire alarm to go off in the stadium. Megan Rapino comes in for the final 30. And that's where we are. Player ratings across the board this morning. And we'll compare. What we'll do is we'll we'll go with our friends at Soccer America in addition to our friend uh, Caitlin Murray over at the four letter. We'll, we'll do kind of a compare and contrast here. And this is uh, this is going to be probably, yeah, we'll go ahead and say that this is going to be opening kickoff and probably most of the show this morning. So, all right, so here's what we'll do. And this is one thing that uh, our friends at Soccer America do not do. And it was rank Vlatko. Caitlin Murray puts a number in for Vlatko at a four. Knicks, so to recap, one sub before the 90th, and she's 38 years old, shambles managing. So, Caitlin Murray gives Vlatko a four. Quote, in his pre-match news conference, the U.S. coach said he doesn't read or listen to any of the media coverage surrounding the team, but it feels like he got word everyone was clamoring for Lynn Williams to start. Brighton getting into the box, finding chances, suffered from the same finishing yips that have affected the rest of the team. Most concerning is that the USWNT didn't seem to have a cohesive game plan. And again, it was up to individual moments to decide the match, but that's nothing new in this era of the WNT under uh, Antonovsky. At least he remembered he could use subs this time. The USWNT switched to a double pivot late to hang on for the draw. Uh, Will gives... Uh, Will gives Vlatko a minus three. I hope I'm reading that right. Uh, so Will, Bart down there, yeah, it is BDT. Uh, Rapino just didn't look like she has it anymore. A few passes where the creativity was there, some touches that were awful. Uh, Abby, morning, not a great morning. Just don't understand why only one sub at the half, and then you want to make subs in the 96th minute. Carly Lloyd said it. The coach is part of the problem. Will, love Megan Rapino. She didn't have it. Abby, bam, you got what you wanted. USC coming in second, so they're in Sydney. All right, now to the player ratings, compare, contrast. And like I said, let me know what you guys are thinking. I'm just going to go ahead and say it right now. That uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. We're going to go ahead and just call it right here. Opening kickoff. Brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee. Kickoffcoffeeco.com. Thanks to them. Don't forget to use the code soccer down here 15 to get 15% off your purchase. They in turn take 10% reinvested into the youth game and youth initiatives. Very, very cool stuff from our friends at kickoff coffee and kickoff coffee co.com. So opening kickoffs probably going to end up being most of the show, which is fine. Bam final in Melbourne sees one H and two F and it could be Brazil and Colombia. No one got seven or higher. So we're going to compare and contrast now as we go. Keeper. Caitlin Murray gave Nair a five. Voitala gave the U.S. A keeper Alyssa Nair a four. Comparing their notes, Nair didn't. Uh, Caitlin Murray did what uh, she needed to do, but wasn't tested much. Nair's near post made the biggest save of the game in stoppage time, denying Anna Capetta when she was through on goal. Voitala. Nair, who in the first half was called on once to snag a tame cross, booted the first back pass she had to deal with into the stands, but found teammates in her next two tests, wasn't called on to save a shot. U.S. survived Nair bobbling a ball in the 82nd, coming off her line in stoppage time and thoroughly misjudging a high ball. It was the post that made the best save against the Portuguese on the Capeta shot, searing one minute into stoppage time. So, 4-5. That's what we have with our two ratings in our compare contrast segment this morning. Will says nobody deserved seven or higher. Abby says no one got seven or higher. 
Yeah, Tafka, we got Leagues Cup on the uh, the dossier this morning. No worry about that. Bam did see Bart. So Bart is now two for two in his appearances. I uh, did see Bart on TV before the game started. Abby would not give the keeper a five. Awful kicks and head time and didn't stop the ball and then kick. All right, so let's go to defense. Emily Fox, Caitlin Murray gave her a five. Wojtala gave her a four. Wojtala, Fox headed clear an early cross, but the right back proved unable to play out of the back. So basically one sentence on Emily Fox. Caitlin Murray, although she wasn't perfect, she made some good plays to keep Portugal at bay and generally did her job. Caitlin Murray, Julie Ertz a five. Same from Wojtala. Portuguese focus on attacking wide in the first half kept the pressure light on Julie Ertzanoma Girma, who left out, who helped out left back Crystal Dunn against the dynamic Jessica Silva, who shot wide after she outran Dunn to a 16th minute through ball. Ertz, Caitlin Murray, a steady, a steady presence in winning balls and breaking up attacks, and up until missing the duel that would have allowed Capetta to score the winning goal, if not for the post. Jirma gets a six from Caitlin Murray and a six from Wojtala. Jirma intervened uh, from Wojtala. Jirma intervened frequently in the second half when Portuguese attempted balls down the middle, including a yellow card foul for a free kick that threatened less than it could have. Ertz was marking Telma in Karnaschau when she nodded the ball to Capetta for Portugal's big chance. So a six for Jirma both times. Caitlin Murray, the USWNT's best player of the first half, which shows how that half went. She was dependable in winning aerial duels, cutting out attacks, passing to her teammates. Her yellow card was the only blemish. Caitlin Murray, Crystal Dunn gets a five. Wojtala from Soccer America gives her a four. Dunn covered more territory with her forays, but none bore fruit, often because her passes were intercepted, according to Wojtala. Caitlin Murray got uh, the five. She got beat a few times. It wasn't the cause of the USWNT's problems. That's your defense. So Caitlin Murray goes 5-5-6-5. Five, five, five. Wojtala goes 4-6-5-4. Four, four. Midfield. Wojtala. Rose Lavelle gets a three from Mike Wojtala, a four from Caitlin Murray. Murray. Lavelle didn't influence the game in the same way she had in the previous two. Her passing was off. Her early yellow card not only held her back from really getting stuck in defensively, but we'll also see her suspended for the next game. We talked about that. Wojtala. All three of the midfielders were forced to spend a significant time defending, and all three struggled in one-on-one battles. Inconsistent with their passes, incapable of dribbling past their foes, Lavelle delivered a cross shortly after kickoff that resulted in a corner kick but failed to create significant offense. She skied the USA's first second half shot far above the crossbar overhead a pass to Smith in the penalty area, mentioning Lavelle's yellow card, second of the tournament. So this is this is I mean, this has been one of the the big bright things that has been focused on here so far early on outside of the paragraphs and outside of the grades the Lavelle yellow card because she will not be around for the next match Abby would give Lavelle a four over a three we'll go over your grades coming up in just a bit Andy Sullivan gets a five from Caitlin Murray in a thankless role she did well to break up attacks and win the ball even if she didn't get much help from her central midfield teammates Wojtala gives Andy Sullivan a four Wojtala Sullivan couldn't meet the demands of her defensive midfield role. She won some balls when Portugal surged in the second half, looked fatigued as she jogged toward the Portuguese player who launched the through ball that set up Capetta's shot up off the post. Lindsay Horan gets a four from Caitlin Murray. Struggled on the ball, couldn't connect her passes nearly enough. Horan got a five from Wojtala. Horan failed offensively but played valuable defense. One sentence. So three, four, five from Wojtala. Four, five, four from Caitlin Murray. Forwards. Lynn Williams got a five. Had some quality chances. Couldn't finish. 
She was the only U.S. WNT player to consistently put herself in dangerous scoring positions. Wojtala got a three for Lynn Williams. First chance and easily saved header. Her half volley from 12 yards went straight to the keeper. First attempt at goal in the second half was a far wide header. She, too, failed to keep possession long enough to give the U.S. midfielders a chance to join the attack. Morgan, a five from Caitlin Murray. Couldn't do anything with a couple of looks she had in front of goal, but worked hard to keep possession and generate opportunities for her teammates. Wojtala destroys Alex Morgan. Gave her a two. Got away with charging into a prone goalkeeper, Ines Pereira, without getting cautioned. Won a corner with her first attempt on goal, volleyed wide on her second. Two chances to score in the 84th minute, failed on both. Morgan's inability to keep possession under pressure contributed to the USA's failure to spend much time in the final third. So Wojtala lights up Alex Morgan, gives her a two. And once again, this is a scale of one to ten. Soccer America's Mike Wojtala gives Alex Morgan a two. Caitlin Murray gave her a five. Sophia Smith, Caitlin Murray, gave a three. Looked to touch slow and lacking bite, often failing to get to 50-50 balls, not getting her passes or crosses off quickly. Got the hook in the 61st after an ineffectual shift. Three from Moitala also. Portuguese defenders proved from the get-go that they matched Sophia Smith's speed. Say that ten times fast. And she produced no other methods of getting past them. Smith shot 20 yards wide from 22 in the second half before being replaced. 3-2-3 3-2-3 from Wojtala up top. 5-5-3 from Caitlin Murray. And even if the United States had won this match, they would have finished 2-1, and one, but they probably would have also been behind on goal difference. Because remember, Netherlands winning 7-0 got them to a plus 8. So even if the U.S. had won, they would have finished 2-1, and one, probably would have still been behind on goal difference at seven points. Bench. Substitutes. Wojtala did not give any ratings to Trinity Rodman, Emily Sonnet, Alyssa Thompson, or Kelly O'Hare. 84th minute, Sonnet and Rodman came in. Megan Rapino gets a two as a sub from Wojtala. Shortly after coming on in the 61st, Rapino underhit a corner kick and the through pass to Morgan banged across into her marker. Rapino hit three passes to the wrong team during promising attacks in the waiting minutes, whiffed on a shot in the sixth minute of stoppage time. Andonovsky didn't sub again until the 84th. Sonnet Rodman came on. Sonnet tried to reach a high cross shortly after arriving, took down Pereira in a manner similar to Morgan's late challenge on the keeper in the first half. Alyssa Thompson, Kelly O'Hara entered in the seventh minute of stoppage time. USA failed to score in group play for the second time in 27 World Cup matches. Tied Sweden in their second game en route to winning the 15 World Cup. 5 a.m. Eastern kickoff against either Sweden or Italy Sunday morning. Caitlin Murray on her subs. Players introduced as a rule for Caitlin. Anybody after 70 minutes doesn't get a rating. So that meant no rating on it. No rating for Rodman, no rating for O'Hara, no rating for Alyssa Thompson. Megan Rapino got a four. Good touches and passes early lost steam as the match went on. So, Nick, were you awake for this? No. <laughs> no. Well, and, appar- and apparently, I mean, you know, those of us that were not, uh, you know, the the post has turned into the MVP, according to some. In this well, goal, I, I mean, it 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 really. It, I I know they they didn't look good. I've I've watched some 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 highlights and whatnot, but the 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 issue with the United States women's national team is that they can have a pretty lousy day and not and and get a draw right like yeah. they can get a draw and have a pretty pretty terrible day 
Mm-hmm. Everyone else has to have a lot of stuff go right for them to walk out a winner. Just because the, the, the raw talent. I mean, you could have a lobotomized gerbil coaching this team. <laughs> and because of the raw talent. And some might say that Vlatko is exactly that. Yeah, no, maybe. But what you have is, is you know, one of the deepest, most talented teams in the tournament. And occasionally they need to get a wake-up call. And the hope is that this is the wake-up call that kind of gets them moving. Mm-hmm. And if they can't do that, <laughs> if they can't do that, then, um, you know, it's going to be time for some significant real changes. So yeah. uh, it, it Coco asked if, if the U.S. Women's National Team loses in the round of 16, are we looking at a reaction, uh, reactor four-level Oh, I would uh, think meltdown. you're DEFCON 5 if that happens. Well, well, hold on, hold on. First of all, let's get the DEFCONs right. DEFCON 4 is like peace. DEFCON 5 would be like the Garden of Eden. DEFCON oh, okay. 1 is all out nuclear war. I mean, we go to DEFCON 1. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that if the U.S. Women's National Team loses in the round of 16, are we looking at Chernobyl? Ooh. Yes, I think so. And that's it, – it, it's more from the standpoint of – a loss like that, to me, would ha- would, it, and it's not going to happen, but it should. It should force a mentality shift in how long you allow certain players to hang out. Yeah, the players that you know have been legends and stalwarts for you, and because I'm an Italy fan, I'll will always use Italy as an example. As you should. Um, there were questions in 2006 about whether to bring Maldini along and you know the one the greatest defender in Italian national team history maybe uh you know there's certainly a conversation that, that could take place with that but the the Italian national team said no we're not we're not bringing him along and it was the same thing with Roberto Baggio they said look we need to bring Roberto Baggio along in like uh in in 02 and it was like nope we don't need to do that and so the progression allowed other players to get opportunities to grow and develop and be competitive. And so uh, how much did Italy pay the refs in 2006, Bam wants to know. Oh, We paid them enough, Bam. We paid them just enough, okay? <laughs> we, we, we paid them enough. We got through. Um, the, the penalty that was awarded – was a perfectly valid, uh, perfectly uh, executed penalty. I can't uh, speak to anything beyond that. So, uh, Bam, Bam, I love you. Um, but yes, the Russian judge did give that dive <laughs> a, a ten by by Totti, and you know, I, I I can't verify that I didn't send that Russian judge a significant amount <laughs> of um, of you know like various types of currency and whatnot. It was not 2002 levels of payment, but short story long, leaving legends at home as painful as it was allowed other players to grow and develop without having the weight of that superstar, that gravitational pull of that superstar around. And I think the U.S. Women's National Team has allowed legends to hang on for a bit too long. And I, I'm, well, I'm willing to accept your hate mail on this, but you know, Italy allowed legends to hang around too long post 2006, and we have never been the same since. Never. Like South Africa was an absolute disaster zone because they essentially said, "Hey, look, bring back the 2016; they'll get it done." No, they weren't. They were over the hill. Um, you know, and they allowed. Uh, you know, I, I would say that the Euros were just. It was an anomaly that that back line held together the way it did with Benucci and Chiellini. And we saw what happened whenever they kept, you know, Benucci and a lot of those other guys around the, this most recent world cup qualifying. They went to sleep. They went to sleep and they get lost to North Macedonia. Woo. Okay. It, it doesn't matter who the opponent is. If, the, if you fall asleep, Anyone can jump up and get you, but 
the U.S. women's national team has allowed legends to hang on for too long, and it's going to, it, if it hasn't already, stunted the development of some of these young supernova megastars that you have on your roster. It, you got to change it. Yeah, that and and maybe it takes a round of sixteen bump to to really sort of clean the pool out to make you go okay all right well we kind of waited long enough we gotta do a rebuild now but it sometimes it takes something like that well but that but that's the the uh, the rub in being pre uh be, being preactive about something and being reactive about something you you're you're trying to be proactive and anticipate the curve. But unfortunately, in situations, you wait until it's entirely too late, and then you have that that weighted collapse, and then you've got to sit there and fight off all of the discussion. It's like, well, what happened? Well, really, what happened is you waited too late to start making your integration and your changes. And if we end up with a premature exit, that's what you're going you're going to get the hyper reactive discussions about well change this change this and change this you know blow it up change it all what have you instead of the 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 changes that should have been made over time if you do just a couple of changes a couple of changes a couple of changes with your integration then everything you don't lose as much, I would think, than if you end up with a full blown just collapse and then you get bumped out and then everybody overreacts to everything. But that's on Mondays here. Um, who am I kidding? It's every day of the week. But that's the thing proactive and reactive. Unfortunately, too many times in sports, we are hyper reactive and have waited entirely too late to make decisions where you should have been earlier and you would have maintained your success, I think. Well, the there's the great illusion of control right right <clears throat> and so as people sometimes say well I, I you know i don't have control over anything i'm just going to let this sort of play out and um you know there there are times that patience is a virtue with that but there are times where if you don't make changes and you allow things just to stay as they are you over the long run have less control over the outcome mm -hmm. Because if you are able to make some painful adjustments early on, it's going to suck. It's not going to be fun. It's like when you're, when you're in your 20s and you make a budget for the first time. And you were like, holy, I'm blowing how much money on booze during the week? Uh -huh. Yeah, I got to slow this down, man. Good Lord. <laughs> and it sucks. And your friends are like, oh, you're lame. You can't come out. And then but that, that's painful. But over time, you come out better because of it, because you stuck to your budget and you stuck to your guns and you made adjustments early, as opposed to your friends who kept going out and living that same lifestyle and having no damn money at the end of the month. And they're calling you and their mama and everybody else. I need five hundred dollars or we're going to shut the power off. OK, well, congratulations. You should have made some difficult choices early on, you know, yeah. and that's something that. I think most of us uh, who are of a certain age have had to deal with, but you have to make these painful adjustments now early. <clears throat> so you don't get caught in a situation where the U S women's national team is now where you have some stalwarts who are like, you know, hanging out, you know, like, like, okay, you have skill set does not drop off overnight, you know, but what happens is those unbelievable moments get fewer and farther between each instance and so you know one airborne dj talks about his like roberto baggio throwback i'm beyond jealous sir of your <laughs> recent acquisition good lord very jealous here mm -hmm. um jason nix uh says you know I, I just love when rapino comes in and all they can talk about is her free kick prowess that she can't beat the first defender on the corner and can't run anymore. Yeah, look, you if you have these great moments, everyone will sit there and point and go, ha ha, see, see, this is why you have them there. Ha 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 ha. But it's Russian roulette. That that there there and as you get older, there are fewer and fewer rounds in that chamber, baby. You're not gonna always get that big bang when you need it. You're all you're going to end up with, you know. Oh, well, it just sort of fell apart in that moment. We don't know what happened, you know. Uh, 
Well, I, I can tell you what happened. You got beat, you know, you got beat on the turn. You were not able to do one-on-one -on -one defending. You're, You're 30. not able to win those matchups. You were reliant upon one key moment to try to change the game from someone who's done it a couple of times. You saw this with David Beckham late in his career where it was like, okay, let's just try to put David somewhere, anywhere near a, a, a roughly dangerous position. You know, England relied on that a little too much, a little too long. Um, Italy relied on that with the back line. Uh, Brazil had that happen when, when Julio Cesar fell off a cliff in his performances and they kept trotting him out there. It, it, and this happened with the U.S. Women's National Team now. you got to clear the deck and let these young, these young studs, these young starlets, uh, start running things because you know, we're, we're getting into the being too risk averse. Oh, we got to call these legends up. No, we don't. You don't got to call up anybody. You got to win. That's it. Knicks, Ertz, Rapino, Sonnet, O'Hara should not have been on the roster blocking others. Will references somebody staying too long at the party being uh, Carly Lloyd in 2019. Will saying she had no business being there and was a toxic presence, said not getting playing time there was the worst time of her life. And to the end, Nick Nix says, it's like Nick said, it's all individual moments with this team, no actual team play in sight. I legitimately thought that having Megan Rapino coming off the bench, I figured somewhere in this tournament you would have that moment, capital T, capital M. I figured that one of, one of these instances you would get that you know, once again, the, the clouds would let the sun appear one final time for Megan Rapino in a tournament, something like that. That's what I figured would happen with her as a part of this roster. I don't know if you uh, had the opportunity, speaking of Carly Lloyd, uh, after the uh, American rights holder finished their broadcast in their postgame show, and this is from our friends at The Athletic, Fox Sports briefly showed, and this is from the uh, the recap from Allie Rampling. Fox Sports briefly showed footage of Megan Rapinoe, Alex Morgan, Crystal Dunn dancing at full time as Captain Lindsey Horan laughed and applauded while Trinity Rodman posed for photographs with supporters. Players also looked disappointed at the result, but Lloyd, working as a pundit for Fox, said, quote, I've never witnessed something like that. There's a difference between being respectful of the fans, saying hello to your family, but to be dancing, to be smiling. I mean, the player of the match was that post. You're lucky not to be going home right now. So you have now Carly Lloyd opening fire. And then when uh, Lloyd says this, Vlatko is asked about it after the match in number one versus 21. Andonofsky says this. Lloyd's postgame uh, remarks that the U.S. lacked passion. Vlatko said it didn't match what he saw. Quote, the one thing I want to say is that this team wanted to win this game more than anything else. They put everything they could in preparation for this tournament and every game that they go into. So to question the mentality of this team, to question the willingness to win, to compete, I think it's insane. I've never seen this team step on the field not to try hard or not compete. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. They can say whatever they want, but I just know how this team feels. It's not like we played well by any means. We owned it. We know it's not good enough. We're not happy with our performance, but we qualified for the next round. We're moving on. And that seemed to be the, the uh, soundbite that seemed to uh, be unified in the mix zone. Alex Morgan pretty much saying the same thing. Uh, Lloyd continued. You never want to take anything for granted. You put on that jersey. You want to give it everything you have for the people that came before you and the people that are going to come after you. And I'm not. I'm just not seeing that passion. I'm just seeing a very lackluster, uninspiring, taking it for granted where winning and training and doing all that you can to be the best possible individual player is not happening. Well, look, I'll push back in this one thing, right, is that I want to win a foot race against a 25 year old. I'm 43. I don't possess the same explosive speed as I did when I could run a four, six in high school, mm -hmm. right? I could flat out fly. I can physically feel how slow I am now <laughs> at, 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 you know, at, at 43. And that's because time is undefeated mm -hmm. and, the issue with the U.S. I don't think is a lack of passion. I really don't. I, I think that 
you know, you could be very, very passionate about success, but unless you have the capability to execute, it's not happening. And if you, if you say, Hey, look, what's our, what's our way to win in this game? Uh, you know, go long. All right, cool. What happens (laughs) if go long doesn't work? Um, go long again. Yeah. The old Steve Spurrier, go deep, go early, go often. We're going to wing it. We're going to wing it. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Throw it around the yard. Oh God. Those were great. I used to love cutting his press conferences for, for coach speak at NCAA.com. Can't smell citrus without UT. Oh my God. It's, you know, there's no, the issue I think with the U S women's national team again, is there are folks who are, who are lingering Mm -hmm. and they just physically can't go anymore. And there's nothing, you know, that doesn't mean they're bad people. It doesn't mean they lack respect or passion or anything like that. Uh, But it does mean that they probably should be moving into an advisory role. And if, you know, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of opportunities. There's no limit for coaching, right? There's, you know, you can have as many coaches as you want. I, I believe, Yep. you know, so if, if Rapino wants to be a part of the travel and all that stuff, then be a, then be a stateswoman and say, okay, I'm coming along with Latko and I'm going to help, you know, bring this team along, but just in a different way. And that could be her role. I just, you know, I, I look at the, the comments from the, the former player turned pundit the the most recent former player turned pundit on that table uh you know it, the the yin and yang that is on the right hand side as we're watching camera right uh, uh from that adult table from the the u.s rights holder it's an interesting dichotomy but apparently now that has it was an interesting dichotomy there was some good cop bad cop there initially but now both of them have turned heel and are trying to just cut the promos and let it all hang out uh, verbally over there on the right-hand side of that desk. And there is a significant part of me since I have, you know, been in this business since the days of black and white television, when color TVs did not exist, that know full well, Nick, that that is a show. That it, it, it yeah. is that it is a show and it is there for ratings. It is there for effect. Yet I still wonder how much of that in all of these comments, the individuals on the right-hand side of that desk actually do believe considering that they have both served their country in that respect. If you talk to Alexi Lalas outside of television, you find out that it's all an act, Mm -hmm. all of it, every bit of it. He has been kind and generous and, and, more often than not, we'll talk to anybody yeah. that comes up to him. But Alexi believes that the what the U.S. needs now, the U.S. audience, is they need they need commentary like with what they have in Spain, what they have like you know El Terenguito and you know some of the stuff on Taise where it's just it's absolute madness. Yeah. And he understands the role of the wrestling heel. Yep. And he plays it to the nth degree on television. Carly does not understand that. I think Carly believes every word of what she's saying. Yeah. And I think that she does, she has not learned to play a character yet on television. And so the Carly you're seeing is the Carly that you're, you actually get in real life. That's, you know, I I think that's part of what I can't stand about. uh, And I know this is, this is going to make the chat blow up. I would take Carly Lloyd's takes over Alexi Lawless's takes, because at least I know it's somebody is is, like, she's giving her honest thoughts as screwed up as they may be as incorrect as they may be at least we know we're getting her real thoughts. And yes, Jason, I think she is. She's mad in general. Um, But 
the disingenuous nature of Alexi's garbage that he spews is that you're not there to be a wrestling heel. Like you, like, I don't care why Fox pays you at some point you can fish for engagement and you can throw out all these hot takes and half spoken truths and whatever else to try to get that, that, that pop, you know, Mm -hmm. that they call in the business. Yeah. But in the end, it, it, you're not helping your sport. You're not helping, you know, the teams. You're not helping the audience. You're not helping the growth of the game either. No, no. And and I wish that's the one, you know, because if with Alexi, if he knows the minute he says, okay, what are we angry about today on social media? Mm-hmm. He knows what's coming. And he he waits for it. You could say it's the old wrestling heel persona, for those who don't know, is – the, the wrestling heel, the bad guy, bad guy yeah. comes out and the whole place boos. Now, a new wrestling fan will watch this and be like, oh, my God, this guy's going to be out of a job, man. And the guy comes out and he talks about your mom, your friend's mom. Uh, he talks about, you know, how the you're city all broke. In. Oh, the city's terrible. You know, it's a swamp. It's a disaster zone. Mm-hmm. They should just wreck it all to the ground. The crowd is like throwing things at him and while the new fans go oh my god this guy's horrible he's got to get out of here in the back they're high-fiving them they're like they're like yeah good job here's your bonus for the night man you can yell you can scream you can cheer the worst thing you can do is give them silence mm-hmm. and alexi knows you're never going to give him silence so he wins no matter what but carly um because she is mad at the universe yeah. um you know, I don't think she's going to, and she has that reputation. She's not going to get that same sort of joyful engagement that Alexi gets, you know, uh, uh, and I think that's something where it's, it's not helping Fox's view of how to present a game is not helping things. Taylor Twelman, that his, his nonstop. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? You know, like, uh, like, okay, it was great in a moment. Yeah. It was an honest reaction in a moment that you have turned into a full shtick that, is just terrible now, right? This is shouting for the sake of shouting. It is a, it is a one, it is a one trick pony. Right. And there's a lot of issues I have with soccer commentary in America. And and it stems from the fact that a lot, especially on the men's side, uh, and I'll give Carly this as well. Carly's been to the mountaintop. Yeah. You know, she's been, you know, the best in the world at one time. She's been, you know, the, the, some of the stars that are up there on that on that U.S. above the women's crest are, are there because of her. The U.S. men have nothing of that. Like, it, I feel like it's nonstop inferiority complex for for the for the men's side. You know, like you, know, you should respect us. We are the forefathers of this. We put this game in that. Awesome, but you didn't win anything. Good for you. Like gold cups and okay, great. You won a gold cup or or, or whatever. Okay, great. Uh, you, uh, you know, you may have made it to the, the quarterfinals of the world cup, you know, or awesome. Good for you. But in the end, like it's, it's the nonstop inferiority complex out of all of them, which is why they're so damn messy on social media. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I know I just went on a rant there, but it's, I, I'm sorry. It's just, t- I'm, I'm tired of dealing with it. I put it on Spanish commentary. And I, I just enjoy the game for what it is. I, I don't even put any of them on anymore because whether they're, you know, being incredibly angry for no reason <laughs> other yeah. than like the world is existing or they're playing a character, I, I'm tired of dealing with it. Uh, Henry Bushnell, just to, to add to the reactions here, Henry Bushnell out of Yahoo uh, apparently saw a different reaction that we've been talking about. Players could, and then first off, he references the fire alarms going off second half. Players could surely hear them later as they trudged around the field in an unemotional daze seconds after the draw with Portugal. A goalpost and final whistle spared and then permitted entry into the World Cup round of 16, but none looked relieved. All looked the polar opposite of excited. So I don't know. So we, we've got, you know, we've got big FOX showing one thing, Henry Bushnell from Yahoo seeing another. 
Because they, the back-to-back champs, had been periodically outplayed and nearly eliminated by a World Cup debutante, they failed to win two group games for the first time ever. They were supposed to be the pre-tournament favorites, but two weeks in, their coach looks clueless and their players surpassed by European counterparts. Speaking post-game to reporters, they attempted to feign confidence and satisfaction, but tones and facial expressions undermined it. Quoting Vlatko, we just have to get better. And they can, players reiterated, but none could offer a convincing argument that they will. Bushnell's letting them have it with both barrels. They were poor for 45 minutes against the Netherlands, worse for 90 against Portugal. Players were asked what was wrong, pressed on why the number one team in the world looks so mediocre, and their explanations ran the gamut of the entire sport. Haran, we need a little bit more belief when we're playing. Lavelle, I think we've got to be a little more ruthless in front of net. Rapina, we could switch the point of attack more noting that they were too predictable, but they also couldn't keep the ball. We need to be more calm. We need to be more poised, Haran said. And, quote, we know that they have really good dynamics, but they suffer when they don't have the ball, Portugal coach Francisco Neto said. They suffered because their press once again was inconsistent. Rapino, I think it's tough when we don't keep the ball as well as we want to. Things get a little bit disjointed. You kind of feel like you're just running back and forth all the time. I think picking up second balls, Lavelle said, and getting into those battles was another one. We need to be a little bit more fluid, and I think just be a little bit more connected offensively, according to Rapino, Alex Morgan. I think it's a little bit about decision-making on the ball. It's a little bit about holding the ball a little bit more, expecting the pressure and not letting the opponent create turnovers. Vlatko, quote, I don't think it was in sync. I don't think that was a good performance altogether, starting from the back line, midfield forward, and then the final pass. It's also being comfortable in our defensive shape for more than two or three seconds, Morgan said. And then it's taking care of chances in front of goal, set pieces in particular corners, and free kicks. In other words, it's almost everything, according to Bushnell. Center back Noma Girma has been the only U.S. player who's impressed. So what needs to change? Kelly O'Hara. Um, honestly, I think it's just like I'm not sure. Antonovsky seemed to pin blame on the players as a collective. Quote, we have to stick to our principles. We have to stick to our game model. We have to stick to our philosophy. When asked if the players hadn't been doing that, he said, I don't know if they were not sticking to the principles altogether, but there were times where maybe we were not on the same page or we didn't read certain moments of the game or certain triggers, end quote. Bushnell, and he was right, but of course he bears a significant portion of the blame for their incoherence. Bushnell, Antonovsky is an underqualified coach who has done very little to improve the WNT. In fact, his game model and principles have dragged them away from their strengths, athleticism, and grit toward their glaring weaknesses. They're tactically unsophisticated and technically insufficient relative to their European peers. A defective youth pipeline has left them woefully unprepared for the international stage. I would disagree with that. I disagree with that completely. Uh, but like I said, this is Bushnell from Yahoo. So he's, he's on a roll and he's letting it, he's letting it happen. Uh, all of that's been abundantly clear over the past 12 months. It was clear against Spain last fall, against Japan this winter. None of what happened Tuesday in that broader context was remotely surprising. And so as dominance unraveled into borderline inferiority, worry became hysteria and defeatism. He's building to a conclusion here. Mm. He's building to all this emotion. The hope all along was that mentalities and swagger would supersede skill and propel the USWNT back to the top of the world, but they haven't, not yet anyway. Antonovsky says, hopefully we can synchronize and get the lines in sync for the next opponent. Antonovsky said, but that's what it's come to, hope. If there's optimism, it's irrational. There are five days to fix 15 different problems, and this is the only reason to believe they'll be fixed and that the USWNT will improve. Juliet said, it's what we do. I just have blind confidence in everything around us and in myself and in the group. Rapino said, it has to improve. It just has to. Uh, Bushnell went off the rails on a couple of those points, but I definitely... Uh, understand the frustration. Well, I, 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 here's, I'll put it this way. Sure. I, one of the, there are a couple key things whenever I say that there are issues in America with, with the sport. Mm-hmm. I don't think the player is the issue. I think we, America has generated a ton of very good talent. Our issue is coaching. We, we, we have a shortage of really good coaches <laughs> in this country. And it, good coaching is not just X's and O's, right? Because there are some very, very 
tactically advanced coaches who are just horrific human beings and don't know how to properly, you know, be good man managers, right? That's, that's fine. Uh, we have an over-reliance on risk aversion, yeah. right? Everything is like, we can't take gambles here. Everything is metrics, you know, metrics and it's all, you know, everything is, you know, there's no daring anymore. The, you know, pay to play system does not help. I, you know, I, I agree with that, but I agree with it. And, and not just access for the players. I think it also provides a very narrow pipeline for coaching talent. Yeah. Because if you are a very good coach and have great philosophies and you have to pay, you know, $5,000 for a B license, that is an automatic, you know, that's, that's, that's a, a, a breaker for you. It's a glass ceiling, you yeah. know? And it's, it's something where, you know, I, I, the one thing I agree with, with, with what Bushnell said is that, you know, I think the coach, you know, I think Blacko is out of his depth here, I, but I think that this is a systemic issue with, with U S soccer that it's, we have relied on being the best physically prepared team in the world since what 92 yeah you know and, and guess what the world's closing in on you well not it, and and it's closing in but it's closing in with the way that they've always done which is we have a way to play and this way to play is going to carry us when it's the 87th minute and we're tired mm -hmm. you know like we can move the ball and we move the ball you know, we move the ball in a particular way. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, foolproof. But if we have a system where every player on this roster knows this is how we play, this is our philosophy, this is what we do in this situation or that situation, and it's not just, okay, we're going to throw some poo at a wall and see what sticks. It's, you know, I, I think that's where the U.S. has been. For a minute, the, like the, the the philosophy of these coaches that come in is radically different for each one, yeah. you know. It, it, and for you know, if you look at the Netherlands, they play a very similar way, men's side, women's side. Now it may be more mechanical under one manager than the other, you know, because it may be more free flowing under one. It may be more mechanical than the other, but the principles do not change. The, and, and, and content minds over here say that, um, you know, if the, you know, one goal goes in, it's a very different, a very different thing. I, I look I, content. My own, if you've been listening to the, the whole show, but I'm not trying to be sarcastic at all, but the, the U S women, as I said earlier, they can have a very, very bad day and still get a draw. Every other team that plays them has to have a spectacular day to beat them, yeah. right? So this isn't this isn't an issue where it's you know the sky's falling, the whole everything's terrible, but it's okay to say that someone or a group is underperforming when they do, and the U.S. is underperforming. That doesn't mean they're terrible. It doesn't mean they're the worst in the world. It we, I'm not. I know there's a lot of shows that, that talk about things that only in extremes, this, yeah. this big, big black and this big, big white, and there's no gray in the middle. I promise you guys, there's a hell of a lot of gray in the middle. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of zone, a lot of landing zones in there between that black and white where it's not the best or the worst. So they underperformed. Yeah. The issue that I have is that the more – the more you have stagnation on the roster from players who probably should have been moved on a while ago, and you have that sort of gatekeeping of the youth, yeah, and the, the you're not setting yourself up for success. And the over reliance on the veterans for the yes for the for the sake of being and having the safe decision instead yes. of because and going back to to Bushnell's uh, ludicrous point. 
Sophia Smith, Alyssa Thompson, uh, Trinity Rodman. Uh, last time I checked, they're all pretty young, and they're, they're okay at what they do. So uh, that's just off the top of my head when it comes to the talent. Uh, I mean, heck, uh, you, you really want to get into it? Uh, Soleil Washington, player of the year here in the state of Georgia, getting reps for the reggae girls. Uh, and, and literally, uh, you could talk about the Philippines, and we'll talk about that coming up in just a sec. We've got breaking news out of the Philippines, uh, Philippines national team. Uh, you have players who are growing up here in the United States representing, you know, home countries for their families. So that, that reach is there here in the States for Bushnell to say what he said about the youth is just absolutely ludicrous. But there, there is an over-reliance, I think, and it comes to that proactive versus reactive conversation, Nick, that we've been having this hour about not, you know, if, if you could use other competitions to institute gradual change so you could be prepared for the World Cup and have the younger players standing out and not be afraid to rely on them in these world situations, then I, I, think, that that's, that's, I think that's part of this too, where you're opting for older, more experienced players who've been there before as the safe pick because you don't have the confidence in the younger players yet in these environments. Does that make sense? I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And, and content mind says now that uh, they seem tense, but they're going for an unprecedented three in a row. Just sit with that. The expectations are truly insane for the team and the coach. I, I will push back on that and say the expectation is not insane. And it's not insane from they will be competitive, but if you're trying to be Brazil, what the what the, the Brazilian men's national team was on the women's side, right? Where when people talk about your sport, no matter what country you're in, you talk about you know any of the old World Cups. And people will say, oh, man, that Bra you know, the Brazil team in this year or this year or this year. My God, I fell in love with the game. You know, I, 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 I watched this player and this player. The expectations are there because they have earned that level of respect. They have earned that, 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 that expectation, right? This is not just like, you know, one team skyrockets to the top and falls off and the other team skyrockets to the top and falls off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not, we're not talking about like uh, this cycle. We're talking about sustained greatness. Yeah. We're talking about Real Madrid. We're talking about, you know, Pep's Barcelona. We're talking about, you know, Brazil from like 90, from like 90, uh, like, yeah, 90, 94 to, uh, you know, to like, Oh, two. I mean, like these insane runs, greatness means expectation. And the, the, there, there's no more talented group in the world, top to bottom, than the U.S. women's national team. There's not. I'll take the Pepsi challenge on that. There's no team in the world that is more talented individually, player to player, than the U.S. women's national team. Yeah. And the rest of the world's catching up with better systems, right? Better tactics, uh, you know, you know, El, El Vernar is, you know, came over from the, from, you know, coaching in Saudi Arabia. They got that insane win, right? Yeah. <laughs> in, in, you know, over in the men's world cup, he's over here coaching the French women now. And, you know, things are, are changing. But the issue that I think a lot of us are seeing content mind is that the level of greatness that we have does not have does not have, you know, it, it, it's, it's not permanent. And if you don't play your cards right, you can go from being exceptional to average. If you go to sleep in these tournaments, you can go from exceptional to average. That's still not a permanent state, right? You can, get, you can reclaim that glory. The, 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 where Bushnell is really wrong on this is the youth pipeline. That's yeah. that is the most buffoonish. Yeah. You have you have women players coming up now, who are like, I guess I'm going to look for a spot on the Italian women's national team. We interviewed one. 
Mm-hmm. On this show, we John Nelson interviewed a player out of Atlanta, Georgia, mm-hmm. who was with the U.S. or was with the Italian uh, youth women's national team, and is uh, playing at what North Carolina, right? Yeah. yeah. And because she's having to find a spot to land, you know. Yeah. Uh, you have you have a, a player out of Shambly High School who's playing with. Jamaica. Uh huh. You're telling me that she, you know, that, that in any other cycle she might have been on that that U.S. women's radar. The, the youth pipeline in this country for the, on the women's side is insane. Mm-hmm. And so Bushnell, I think, really kind of exposed himself in that moment where he says, "Oh well, it's you know, I, I'm buying into the old trope that there's 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 no pipeline for the youth, and we had this one golden generation. That is absolute horse crap because there's been a phenomenal amount." of youth talent that's coming through that talent on the men's side gets stifled and gets a ton of gatekeeping and it's getting better but it's not there the women's side has no issues i think i think lock stock and barrel the women the women's issues are largely centered around coaching and roster decisions that not talent yeah not raw talent that's that no if you say the the women the U.S. women aren't talented enough. I, I don't know what to tell you, but I think it comes down to roster selection, and I think it's it's managers though. I think that's the issue. And, and um, Jason Nick says, as as I said above though, Nick, we have players sure, but the development is not near what it is in many European teams. I will com- I will completely co-sign that. And, and if you talk to people who've lived in Europe, and you know, you talk the game, they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, you can go play for the city team. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. And they have really well-paid coaches who have gone through this whole battery of testing and certifications and everything. And it's very easy to go and get those certifications if you are so inclined. Here in the U.S., that is not the case. You know, I I, I went to look, I, I looked at uh, getting licensing and it was like what five thousand dollars to to do like and and those may be older numbers but i want to say it was like five thousand dollars to get your b license yeah and to me that is that is i mean cocaine's a hell of a drug Mm -hmm. you know that that's absolutely insane that they're charging that (laughs) yeah but we have talent i think coaching's at a shortfall i think in this case roster selection is a shortfall and that is that's part of the problem and and, you know neglect neglect can lead you to become mediocre just as much as age can you know yeah uh keep an eye out on atlanta united twitter apparently five stripes don't stop and uh there there is a there is a flight from Le Havre, Octaville Airport in France, heading to Atlanta, at least according to the ticket, which departs at 1717, and uh, we'll keep an eye on it. So uh, five stripes don't stop, and it looks like uh, the uh, Le Havre, Octaville uh, origin seems to be heading to Atlanta. We'll keep an eye on that as we hit here in uh, hour number two. Obviously, we'll keep talking about this and, and all the other things going on, but since it is uh, just past the halfway point, I think I have to cut a promo now and uh, discuss the uh, the better parts of what it's like when, uh, you know, you have something over your shoulder and you got to talk about it. So it's uh, time to do that and uh, hit a promo. Let's talk about our friends from Eliminize. For order free, clean, fresh air, one place you need to go, it's Eliminize service. Uh, Eliminize deodorizes enclosed spaces like houses, apartments, and condos. They've created a customized solution that, that eliminizes all organic odors, including those like pets, cigarettes, and food. Realtors and property managers use Eliminize service to eliminize bad odors to help them sell or rent their homes that much faster. It's a turnkey process. Makes it easy to work with realtors and property managers. Kind of the environment. We like that these days, offering a green way to get rid of odors without any kind of toxic residue whatsoever. Different than Febreze or other masking agents that you may have either under the sink or above you in the cupboard, because when you reach under the sink or above you in the cupboard, grab that masking agent and spray it in the air. There's a reason they call it a masking agent. Because you're just masking the odor, not attacking the problem 
all the way down to the molecule like our friends at Illumini Service do with their proven scientific formula. Pricing very, very easy. One of two ways. Either buy the cubic footer parts per million to come up with a price that's affordable for you, offering results in 24 hours or less. If you have any questions frequently asked or otherwise, one place you need to go, and it's their website. And this is where I grab my pen. Website over my left shoulder, for those of you watching on Twitch, is Illuminize.com. But after the .com, do us a favor here at SDH. Go slash Atlanta so they know what part of the world that you are addressing them from. So they know what part of the world they can help you when it comes to attacking your problems. Full homework assignment. E-L-I-M-I-N-I-Z-E dot com slash Atlanta. Eliminize dot com slash Atlanta. Eliminize service. Proud sponsors of everything SDH. Book them, Dano. Aloha. As we're now here in hour number two. So... Uh, keep an eye on the Twitters. Uh, Red Bulls apparently have dropped a 50 years of hip hop kit. That kit is gorgeous. Okay. That, that, that kit is absolute nuclear fire. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably going to cost about $190,000. Very, very it's, nice. It's, it's, it's really graffiti. It's like really graffiti inspired, urban art inspired. I'm very a huge, nice. huge, huge fan. Very nice. uh, Content Mind says the level of women's professional and national team soccer has grown immensely over the past 10 years and way more countries are getting involved. The U.S. women's national team is going to be seriously challenged for a top spot. This will make them better in the end. I agree to a point. Should it make them better that the rest of the world is competing at a higher level? Yes. However, if you don't have the organization around you or the organizational ethos to step to meet that challenge, it will not make you better. It will, it will make you average. If you, don't, if you aren't willing to step, you know, that's, that's the thing, you know, if the, if the organization does not recognize, hey, look, uh, everyone else is getting really, really good. It might be time for us to go back to, you know, you know, go back to the drawing board, change one or two things here, so that way we could stay, can maintain our 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 market advantage, right? Uh, BlackBerry dominated the phone market for. Mm-hmm. Years until Jim Balsilli decided not to adapt. Yeah, and and that and they there was a conversation when Steve Jobs dropped the the iPhone, right? And everybody was like, "Ooh, this is insane! All these apps and all this media." And, and they had a board meeting at BlackBerry, and BlackBerry said, "We are going to do the exact same thing we've always done. We're going to focus on battery life." And the reason is, is we know people are going to want all this media, all these apps, but the, the network is not built to handle this. It's going to, it's going to essentially cause the, the network to detonate. This can be too much, you know, product through the pipeline. Yeah. It, they can't support it. So we're going to focus on battery life. And they watched as their market share dwindled year after year after year after year. And it, and it went from, used to sign up for a corporate job and a BlackBerry was handed to you to, Hey, it's a bring your own device world. Now bring your iPhone, bring whatever, it doesn't matter. And BlackBerry, the, this was gone. They're like, Oh, well we have a QWERTY keyboard, like a physical keyboard. Don't you love a physical keyboard? And somebody is over there like playing, you know, candy crush and like, nah, now we're good. I think we're, I think I'm good on this. So if, the U S is going to stay competitive, but that's just raw talent alone is going to keep you competitive, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be elite in a world of rising powers. If you don't make the necessary adjustments. And I, I, that's the biggest thing I have. The the ethos within U S soccer seems to be, you know, just keep the status quo. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not changing anything. We're, we're, we're elite. We're We're awesome. We're amazing. And we're going to just keep doing what we do and we're not changing anything. That's a recipe for disaster in my mind. Yeah. And so, you know, raw talent does not equal chemistry, right? Good management can help build chemistry, but that doesn't help you long-term. So the U S will be competitive. Yes, it is a cycle. 
but that doesn't necessarily that doesn't mean that you need to subject yourself to self-inflicted wounds by not making significant adjustments to your program either. So then bam, before he goes to bed, pose the question, is this the beginning of the end of the WNT's dominance of women's soccer? Dominance. Yes. It's going to be far more competitive going forward. Dominance means that your, your head and shoulders, like it's not even, yeah, it's, it's not even close. Like uh, it's who's going to lose to the in the nineties. Like okay, who's going to lose to the Cowboys this year? You know, like it, it, there's a level of dominance where like people don't even laugh. Yeah, it's like oh oh, oh god, who's going to step up now? Okay, great. Yeah, you're not you're not beating them. So you're not going to be able to dominate because the gap is closing, and I think it's closing a heck of a lot faster than some pundits anticipated but yeah. they they're, they're going to be very competitive that's not going to change but dominance no that's not going to happen so tom russo asks so what we're saying is is the wnt is a blackberry uh, it could be it Depend- could be if Depend- they don't make changes and you allow spain and if you allow spain and uh france and the netherlands uh, to really change how they do things. If Brazil is able to get past the a, a Marta centric world and, you know, have some, you know, more young stars come through, um, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 this could go, this could be turned into a rock fight to quote Jared underscore Smith very, uh, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, a couple of pieces of a uh, couple of pieces of breaking news, and uh, it's it's good breaking news, and it's definitely good to uh, to hear this kind of stuff happen. Uh, first piece is a, a really cool piece of news, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do this one. Get this. This is stellar news. For those of you that have the the satellite radio in your automobile, part of our family is now part of the Sirius XMFC family. Jessica Charman is going to be on the United States of Soccer with Marissa Pilla starting this Wednesday. They got smart people, and they got smart people. That's right. Jess is being added to Sirius XMFC. Very, very cool stuff there. Uh, could not be more happy or more proud. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's good when good people yes. find their way to, to, to the spotlight. And mm-hmm. She's good people. Yep. Uh, also on the board, we're mentioning, you know, with teams not making it into the knockouts, news from the Philippines. Contracts of coach Alan Stajic and assistant coach Noel Ararte expired at the conclusion of the uh, World Cup campaign. They will not be renewed as both coaches have asked to explore other options. Coach Allen and Coach Naz from the this is from the, the uh, Philippine Federation. Coach Allen and Coach Naz have expressed their deepest gratitude for the opportunity and support they've received from the Philippine football community. Coach Allen sends this message. I would first and foremost like to express my gratitude to Sir Jeff for giving us the opportunity and entrusting us with the keys to the national team. Throughout nearly 20 months, we went on a journey together as a team from outsiders in Southeast Asia to winning a match at a World Cup semifinal of the Asian Cup, first ever competitive bronze medal of the Southeast Asia Games, winning the AFF in Manila, first goal beating European opposition, recording high FIFA rankings time after time, all of which were special and memorable, brought much deserved attention to the team, capital T, but without question. The two best experiences of my coaching career thus far were the last two World Cup matches, beating New Zealand on home soil, scoring our first World Cup goal, getting our first win was the things that dreams are made of. And despite the scoreline, the last match against Norway, where 34,000 patrons attended, 30,000 singing for the Filipinas brought shivers down our spine. It showed football does belong in the Philippines and that legacy is something we are all proud of. And he goes on to thank the coaching staff, mentions the players, wishes everyone a great future, looking forward to the next chapters in the story, end quote. Laban Filipinas is how he ends his quote. So, um, and now it's great, you know, it's great to see, and we mentioned 
the world closing in on itself when it comes to competitive play for this sport, and we're seeing it in this tournament, and we're seeing that with the uh, the, the Filipinas. And it was amazing stuff that uh, they've been able to do. Another one of the minnows in the tournament showing the growth of the game. Fantastic stuff. Love it. What we need. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't want one team to, you know, to be so ridiculously dominant that it becomes a boring event. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I want... I want there to be competition at all levels. So I don't want it to be, uh, you know, this, this kind of thing where it, the U S is so obscenely dominant that, you know, it, the other teams are just like, okay, yeah, whatever. We're not even interested anymore. Yeah. I love when these, when these smaller teams step up and, and start uh, wrecking shop. Mm-hmm. I think we need more of it. So. Uh, Bam says rumor is, is that, uh, Alan's going to take over at Perth glory, who is up for sale at the moment. So, mm-hmm. uh, so we'll keep, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Ricky with a question, someone on the 280 character app asked who hates their coach more us MNT Twitter or us WNT Twitter. Uh, I will say that the, the venom is probably far more in the column of the U S men's national team. Yeah. Um, there seems to be real hatred for captain khaki. Um, but Vladko, I think it's more of just like, Oh my God, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Just get him out. Just get him out. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Like there seems to be a bit more, I'm not, it's, it's, it's more resignation to the fact that he's probably going to keep continue because the talent on this team is at such a level where, you know, like I said, a lobotomized gerbil could probably, um, you know, operate this team for a short period of time. If I really wouldn't know a difference, but yeah, I, I think Coco nailed it. So the venom is on the men's national team side, but the consternation is on the women's national team side. I think that's very accurate. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at all of that. Alex Bassine says, tell you what, morning, Alex, my Blackberry was the best phone phone I ever had. Big old dedicated mute button on the top. I like that. Nothing wrong with that. Well, it had the QWERTY keyboard. You know, it was nice. It had the QWERTY keyboard. The camera on it was terrible. Except for those of us that have fat fingers. Um, you know, it was, you had the, the secure messaging, BlackBerry Messenger. That was a great feature. But you didn't have... Like the apps were just such a game changer on that first iPhone that it was just like, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Coco, says, Coco says the venom is on the men's side, but the consternation is on the women's side. Yeah, we just, we just covered that one. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's accurate. Uh, now, with all of the third kits being announced, Nick's wants the Atlanta United third kit. Everybody's looking for the ATLians kit. To, to to be dropped in short order. And so uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, if if Red Bulls can drop that 50 years of hip hop kit and I can be this close to thinking that I might actually purchase that thing, then uh, just just imagine what what could be done here in the South. Well, the Dungeon Family, all right? You, you got to have a Dungeon Family jersey. Mm-hmm. I mean, we need like Sleepy Brown. You got to have CeeLo. You got to have... <laughs> I mean, you got to have outcasts. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it just needs to be a season where you have like, you know, the outcast home kit, oh. you know, the, you know, the away kit is like, you know, like the crunk, like, the, you know, cause it, it, for a while Atlanta was like the king of crunk. So, uh-huh. you know, the, the crunk away kit. And then. Cause you know, we are the, the kind of people at the party get crunk. Yes. Yeah. That's terrifying, John, but, but, you know, you, you have the, you know, in the third kit would be like, uh, like the R and P the R and B kit. You know? oh, so you have the R and B. Yeah. I think that's the kit. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So outcast home, crunk away and uh-huh. R and B third kit. Yep. Uh, Red Bulls authentic is 150 bucks. Replica is a hundred. Bam is suggesting an NWA LAFC kit. Yes. 
I mean, could you uh, could you imagine if you went if you took this riff and went with it across the board, what you could have? I mean, you mentioned literally you mentioned an entire series for Atlanta United. There you go. With Bam, it's an NWA LAFC kit. But it's but but you've got to have but you've got to have the the flavor flavor timepiece somewhere in there. Well, you would have you would have like it would so for LA it would need to be you'd have like NWA NWA home death row away. So then would you would you go uh, would you go Beasties for NYCFC? No, 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 no. Well, they're, they're, when are they moving to Queens? Uh, twenty-seven, I think. Okay, so they're they're still in the Bronx now. You got to go. You got to go like heavy Puerto Rican Dominican vibe. Okay. When they go to Queens, then by all means, you could put on Beastie Boys. But uh, Rich is saying Fresh Prince uh, for 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 the Philly. David is like, uh, we just need a big what on the front. See, this is where I go old, old school, though. I want, like, Philadelphia Soul music kit. Yeah. Like, I would want, like, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Oh, see, now that. That's you a know, good call. Like, the Cadillac kit. That would be you that would be mine for Philly. But the Aren't the Temps from Philly? The Temptations? I believe they are. So, um, that's what we're looking at. Um. And so, uh, yeah, Meek Mill, yeah, yeah. LAFC kits, according to Bam, should be NWA, Tupac, and Snoop. Well, I would push back on that only and say that I think Dr. Dre probably had a larger, a larger impact because he was the he was the the beat designer for, you know, for at least two of those. See now, Rich, if you went TSOP, that would be really cool. Yes. Sound of Philadelphia. If you go TSOP, that would be cool. Just don't do a boys and men kit. That's all. No, I no, no, no. Ambi- uh, no. TSOP created the Soul Train theme. Oh, there you go. Yes. And apparently Snoop. Oh, so Ricky says. Don Cornelius. We're ready to unveil the kit. Greatest one of the greatest voices in television, Don Cornelius. We're ready. We're ready to unveil the kits for LAFC. LA Galaxy. And so, so Snoop's a Galaxy guy, so you couldn't have yeah, so you can't have Snoop with uh with LAFC. So yeah, I would substitute Snoop for Dre and I call that an upgrade. Yeah. See, I mean, this is this is what we're staring at. Okay, so uh Tom Russo says he wants an Anita Baker or a Hall and Oates kit. The Hall and Oates kit would do numbers. That would do big, big numbers. But Minnesota is going to win it all when they drop the Purple Rain. Oh, the Lake Minnetonka kit. Oh man, yeah. Could you could you imagine if uh, that buy about three of those things? Could you imagine if uh, they they come in with the purple kit? Yep. Adrian Heath goes. What's that? I, I don't understand what that's about. And then Adrian Heath would get the ghost of Prince would show up just like he did when the, the Vikings beat the Saints. And uh, the, the ghost of Prince showed up and made that Saints player dive too low. Oh. That that would happen. Uh, look, I know you can't buy purple, but I'm sorry. If, if Minnesota drops a purple rain Prince kit mm-hmm. and all of like the all of the fonts are in mm-hmm. like the purple rain lettering, like yep. purple rain font. Yep. I'm buying it. Yep. Absolutely. I'm buying three of them. Absolutely. Uh, so you'd have like you'd have to have the one with. um. You know, like the uh, like the raspberry beret clouds yeah. suit that he wore. Yeah, you'd have to have that. You would have to have like the. Um, you gotta have the symbol, don't you? Well, the symbol kit would be like the the third the third one, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the thing. The Lake Minnetonka purple rain kit would. Yeah, that has to be one. And then you would have like his. Um, let's see. You would have like a door. The door kit would have to be. Like we, uh, th- like you'd have to have like four of those. Like you have to have like the purple rain home kit. Mm-hmm. The, the, that's the purify yourself in the water of Lake Minnetonka's. You would have to have a uh, the cloud kit from uh, Raspberry Beret. You would have to have an adore kit. You would have to have a symbol kit, and probably a third eye girl uh, 
kit as well. So, I mean, look, it, this is. Uh huh. Yeah, Michael Valverde, Valverde loons in the rain. Oh, I'm telling you, it yeah. would be it would be insane. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, City, Rich Ransom making a call for City Kit. See, this is how we fix the world's problems in the sport here on yes. the show. That's Literally right. having the we solved the All Star game, and now we've solved the idea of the of the alternate kits. This is what we do, right? I mean, that this this is I I know we're giving away these ideas for free for card because. The, the problem is, is that in any normal scenario, there's no organization on earth that's willing to take the risk that has the sense and spirit of adventure mm -hmm. to bring in such luminary minds mm -hmm. uh, as uh, that exist here on SDH mm -hmm. and the Twitch pitch. Yeah. We, we are all luminary minds. Okay. We are not walling this off to just us. You guys are a part of this, this, the, the, uh, this, this workshop mm -hmm. of genius. Yeah. Okay. This, the, this is the, like the library of Alexandria pre burning, uh, that's existing right here. And if the, maybe one person is going to listen to this and be like, wow, these guys are onto something. Yeah. We can make this and we would still win. Right. Yeah. I'm just trying to win. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone wins rising tides, all boats, that whole thing. Yeah. And yeah. So like, yeah. Uh, for, so for Chicago smashing pumpkins, right. You have a smashing pumpkins, uh, no kit there that could that could happen. Probably TFC would get the Bieber kit, Bam, because they go Drake. They do. They go. They go. They would, they would. You would have a Drake kit. You, you yeah. Would, you'd have a Drake kit, but Bieber wears Toronto Maple Leaf stuff, and so I'm guessing by default. Uh, well, let's check his birthplace. So, so you would have you would have Drake, a Drake home kit. Yeah. You would have. Oh, you got to have a tragically hip. You got to have it or a rush kit. You got to have rush and the hip in there too now. If you're going to do that. Oh, Blues Brothers Chicago. Oh yeah, yeah. Rant, uh, Rich, that's a that's a, an amazing shout. Mm -hmm. The cinematography on that movie is really underrated. Yeah. Like it's such an incredible movie, but if you go back and you watch the um the the Ray Charles oh. Shake Your Tail Feather, like some of the cinematography on that shoot Especially like when he is, when they do that, that, that extreme close up and Ray's face fills the frame, mm -hmm. and the lighting and every is just that is an unbelievable series of shots. Absolutely, I, I, yeah, yeah, one of the all time great. That's on my Rushmore. Yeah, uh, sure. Will is saying Arcade Fire for Montreal. Uh, the Spielberg cameo at the end as the. Uh, uh, county clerk at the uh, tax assessor's office for yes. county eating the sandwich. Yeah, um, Metallica Bay Area. So actually, you know what you do is you pair up uh, Metallica with Bay FC and get that campaign off the off the ground, or with uh, the Quakes, Jarrett's Quakes and Metallica. You get something like that. Uh, Justin Bieber, by the way, London, Ontario. So it would have to be a TFC kit. Yeah. So you'd have the you'd have the Drake kit, the, the uh... Bieber kit. The B, well, the the Bieber baby kit would be um, would be the away. Um, God, do they get a third kit? What else is in Toronto? Oh, no, like I said, Toronto is like Rush or the Hip, yeah, or something like something in that vein. Okay, you know? so we, we could uh, Anvil, right? There was the old metal band Anvil mm -hmm. that could uh, probably also fit in there as well. Yeah, there's 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 plenty to play with in there. Well, I thought well, Metallica. It, I thought they were more like yeah, Bay Area. Yeah, so that would be more Sacramento, right? You'd have to, or, or or Bay Area would be San Jose or Bay FC out of the NWSL. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, San Jose. Excuse me. Well, if and if Seattle did a Foo kit, I mean, the Seattle's already been ahead of the curve with the Bruce Lee and the Hendrix. Right. They've done those. If Seattle did a Foo kit, well, Seattle has to do a flannel grunge kit. That's what they have to do. That's what's missing. They have to do the flannel grunge kit. Yeah. Um, who is well RSL? That would be uh, Osmonds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so let's so let's see if we do a slip here. Uh, yeah, the Osmonds. Uh, That's it. They have one kit. It's the Osmonds. That's yeah. it. Well, but then they have like eight different ones for each Osmond kid. Did Did anyone see the movie SLC Punk? No, I did not. Am I the only one who was, who's on an island who watched SLC Punk? Probably. 
Oh, Imagine Dragons would have to be an RSL kit. Oh, man. Okay. That's where we are here. It's literally, it is. The Osmonds and Imagine Dragons. It literally is. It's the Osmonds. It's Imagine Dragons. It's Shadezy. Uh, oh, my God. Or what you do. Or, no or wonder what, no one wants to play there. Or what you Jeez. do. Legitimately, what you what you would have if you're RSL, you, you really just lay into it and just do the Morbin Tabernacle Choir. That might do numbers. That might do numbers. So there you go. I mean, that's uh, that that's what you. Uncle stare. Luke, Uncle Luke from Miami would be. That would do. That would do big numbers. You know that Uncle Nevin would really want to some. Uh, Uncle Nevin would get in there. Uh, we do have, uh, we do have a little bit of this, and so uh, we got breaking news now for uh, Atlanta United. Uh, New England gets a Marky Mark in the Fun Bunch kit. Man, you guys are you guys are cold, but that's why we that's why we love you. They got a Boston's kit as well. There you go. First movement in the window uh, for Atlanta United. And it is uh, forward Jamal Chiare. Uh, signed him as a free agent through the 24 season. Uh, Chiare is a Senegalese last with French Ligue inside Le Havre. He will occupy an international roster slot pending the receipt of his ITC and P1 visa. Uh, translates well to the league. Complement the group of players we'll have for the final stretch of the season. Veteran striker, proven goal scorer throughout his career. Looking forward to having him bolster the attack. Uh, 30-year-old born in Senegal, later moved to Belgium, where he began his per, uh, professional career at Sporting uh, Charleroi. And this is what happens when you don't loop your tracks. You hit something, and then it just dies on you after like seven seconds. Yeah, we can't submit this one for an award. No, no, we can't. We can keep We can keep talking, though. Uh, let's see. Summer of 2015, permanent switch to Avranche. Uh, Le Havre in Ligue 2, 29 appearances. Uh Jamal Tiare, six foot, 30 years old, Senegalese. So he is here through the 2024 season pending the receipt of his ITC and P1 visa. So it is depth to help out up top. Five seasons at Le Havre, Tiare, 31 goals, 18 assists, and 129 appearances across all competitions. So you give me a Senegalese forward, I'm, a, I'm an airborne on this one, man. Senegalese players, bring mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Bring them. Yep. And a free. Yeah, and a free. So, um, but uh, yeah, so uh, Abby's now got to figure out what flag he wants. She's got the Senegalese flag up already. She would need Belgium if he wants that one. So that's your that's your news to start the window for Atlanta United. Jamal Tiare, Senegalese forward, comes in on a free, uh, having spent the last handful of seasons at Le Havre in uh, the French league. So. We get that. We add uh, we add Jamal Tiare to the mix for Atlanta United. Uh, where did we Where did we stop with? Uh, we were at Boston. So Boston. Boston's like, got to be Boston, doesn't it? No. 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 I don't know. I, look, I'll put it this way. I don't think so. Great music, awesome, but I don't think there's anybody south of the age of forty five who's going to be sitting there going like, "Oh yeah, Boston kid." You know, Chicago's got sticks. They could, you know, you could put sticks on the uh, as renegade. As, as, they got to get the renegade kit. Yeah, then it would have to be the renegade kit. Uh, yeah, Nick's uh, Doug was discussing uh, two signings, so we'll see. Oh, uh, Rich Ransom, the dropkick Murphys. I will say that there were there were like when the pandemic really kicked off. Mm -hmm. You know, and the whole world stopped that that first week when the world just kind of stopped. There were, I would say there were a few moments where I realized, okay, we're going to be all right. When Dropkick Murphys, they were, they were supposed to do a St. Patrick's Day show in Boston. And the show was supposed to be canceled. And the Dropkick Murphy said, the hell with it. Put it, we're going to live stream it. Just put it, you know, let it go. Stream it live on YouTube. And, and we're going to let it go. And so... They put it on live. They put on a hell of a show. And then AEW 
like the the next day did an empty arena show. Oh, the the uh, the stadium, the uh, the stadium. Oh God, what do they call uh, it? Ba- uh, at, at Bailey's, the oh, Bailey's, yeah, the yeah, Bailey's yeah. venue. Yeah. And they and they said, uh, and Hangman Adam Page came out with the the moniker hand wash Adam page. <laughs> right. Yeah. The Jacksonville shows. And I, it, with that, I was like, okay, I think we're going to be all right. We have a little bit of humor. We have people who are still figuring out ways to make it happen. It, we're going to be all right. You know, cause as a sci-fi junkie, this is like, we were watching like a science fiction movie play out in real time. And I'm like, Oh, well this, this could, there's a lot of different ways this could go as a, as a diehard sci-fi connoisseur. And, uh, and so, yeah, I have a special place in my heart for the Dropkick Murphys because of that. Yeah, I think I'd be a great, a great kid. And uh, oh, uh, Miami, uh, the suggestion. Who was it? It was Ricky. Uh, Miami doing a Gloria Estefan kit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I could. I, I could. I could see that. Yeah. Ricky thinks, Ricky thinks that would be dope. Yeah. I. I, I do we here's my thing ricky do we think that um going beyond gloria stefan here do you you don't think that it it well yeah you'd have to have one kit be latin for sure yes you you don't think to, i was to say two live crew like the whole like uncle luke i mean the you all of that i mean that's that's miami as you can get yeah you know because like whenever I hear that like any of that loop music, you know, it's like right, just right. And he's like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. This is <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on. You know, that's that's the whole. As soon as that, you know, go bring it. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. You know, like it's like oh, oh okay, all right, we're 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 moving into a different. Oh, Nick's pit bull for the Miami kid. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and, I don't get nearly as excited about the Pitbull kit, Mr. Worldwide kit, as as the as the two live crew. Yeah. And I agree, Ricky. I don't. I think MLS would would essentially, um, you know, shut that down. However, the Loop Dancers came to Alex High School pep rallies. <laughs> that must have been interesting. Yes. Oh. That's Miami is not a real place. I love it. That's uh, that's uh, how, how do we say that? That's an interesting story. Alex, on a scale of one to ten, how insane was the pep rally when when the dancers showed up? Mm-hmm. Just I, just let me know. Oh, Will Wu Tang for NYC. Well, here's the thing, Wu Tang. I think I feel like it's. That is one that would have to be. <sighs> yeah, that they're fun. Yeah. Yeah, and Bruce for the, well, see, this is the thing. Will it would have to be so, and it would make an interesting dichotomy. It, would Red Bulls finally lay into their New Jerseyness by doing a Springsteen kit in addition to their 50 years of hip hop kit? That's my take on it is that that's what they should do. Like they should go because when when you look back, there's a great documentary out there. If, if people haven't seen it about the 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 New York avant garde art scene right in the 80s. And it's uh, it. It's the documentary is about a performance artist named Klaus Nomi, and Klaus Nomi was this was this German uh, performance artist who looked like he was dropped from a spaceship, like into the East Village, and had this unbelievable falsetto voice, and really inspired some of David Bowie's outfits. In fact, Bowie straight up ripped off um, one of those, a couple of his his designs if, if you look at the saturday night live where bowie came out and did the man who sold the world klaus nomi is in the black and white like crazy weird tuxedo outfit behind him but there's a, a line in there where they tried to take klaus nomi on the road and the first stop was new jersey which in the middle it was like in the middle of the hair band like hair metal Face. So you had Twisted Sister, right? So Twisted Sister is like headlining and then 
you know, Klaus Nomi's on there and they were like, you got to get this guy out of here. He's not going to make it. So <laughs> you got a great white twisted sister, all these, uh, you know, Bon Jovi at all. This. Look, the fact, and I lived in Hohokus, New Jersey for a very brief moment. Okay. I am a huge fan of Hohokus, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twisted Sister also hails from Hohokus, New Jersey. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it is the most leave it to beaver town ever. Like the cops stop to talk to people who are cutting the grass. Like this is not like Jersey, you know, this is not Sopranos, New Jersey. This is like, you know, Say there, Stan, the yard's looking really great today. Like, okay, that is that New Jersey. Yes, yeah. Mrs. Cleaver. So it, it's, yes, North Jersey. New York Red Bulls, please embrace your roots. Be the New Jersey Red Bulls, the yeah. hair metal, all the, like, all the music that's played needs to be hair metal bands, Bruce Springsteen, just, just embrace yeah. Southside Johnny, Bon Jovi, the whole bit. Yes, all of it. Yeah, see that's see that's the thing. If you did if you did uh, a red if you did an RB and J series, it would probably end up having to be hair metal, Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen. I think that would probably and and Rich with a great point for NYCFC Billy Joel. I think that that would have to be a, a part of this as well. Um. Will wants bad brains to be a part of the DC United series. And uh, Bam is wondering if Toronto would get the Shania Twain man, I feel like a woman kit. That would be, uh, that, that, that yeah. would be, that'd be an interesting run, Bam. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that kit would actually do numbers. It probably would. I think the Shania Twain kit would do some serious numbers. Yep. Uh, We've got the rundown of League's Cup knockouts, and they start tomorrow. We'll get into juice boxes and stuff, you know, tomorrow and as we go. Over the next three days, the second, the third, and the fourth, you get your round of 32s. You've got uh, Inter Miami and the Purple Team, Mazatlan FC Dallas, Pachuca Houston Dynamo, Juarez, and LAFC. On the third, Atlas and the Revs, Red Bull. So you've got Hudson River for the third. Philadelphia DC United, Pumas Cadetero, Charlotte Cruz Azul, Leon and RSL, where they can bust out that Osmonds kit or the Mormon Tabernacle Choir kit. And then on the fourth, Fire Club America, Crew Minnesota United, FC Cincinnati Nashville, Toluca Sporting Kansas City, Monterey in the Timbers, Tigris and the Whitecaps. So that's your round of 32 in the League's Cup. And so that has been made uh, officially official. Uh, we have not had the chance we got 15 minutes to go. We have not had the chance to discuss the Lucas Zellerion transfer yet. And that dropped yesterday, and everybody was like, oh, well, hello. When, uh, you know, crew, they end up uh, they end up selling Lucas Zellerion to another team in the Saudi League. And the Houston Dynamo, by the way, have acquired Polish midfielder Sebastian Kowalczyk. Uh, 24-year-old under contract through 24 options for 25 and 26. Uh, he comes from the Polish top flight side, Pogon Czesin. They announced that officially official uh, this morning. Once again, once the you get the P1C and the work and P1C and the work visa, then uh, your IT, your, sorry, your ITC and your P1 visa. I'll get them figured out sooner or later. 19 goals, 14 assists, 157 matches across all comps, debuting 16-17. So Kowalczyk joins the midfield. With uh, Ace Ace, Karaskia, and Artur, and so uh, that was that was named this morning. But yeah, the the biggest thing. Oh, and Crew also picked up Rudy Camacho. They uh, CF Montreal decided that they just wanted to part ways. Crew transfers Zellerion to the Saudi Pro League to Al Fateh, and did a three and a half year stay after joining from Tigris. 38 goals, 30 assists, 97 regular season matches for Crew, And so now, and he, and he got to have a curtain call, which was very, very cool in uh, Columbus. Opens up a DP spot. The other two DPs are Cucho and Darlington Nagby, otherwise known as Driver. And you're looking for the secondary transfer window open through the second. 
free agents can be signed until the roster freeze date of September 15th. So keep that in mind when it comes to the window closing and then free agents. Window closes tomorrow. Roster freeze date September 15th. You can still sign free agents. But uh, so Lucas Zellerion to the Saudi league in Al Fateh. Good for him. Get you know, get your money. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, it, it's it's good to see designated players getting moved outside of like the small group of teams that it has been. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad to see that that the, the number of teams that are they're selling <clears throat> designated players, you know, for some decent money. I'm I'm glad to see that's happening, but. I mean, good for them, you know? Yeah. Get your money, make it happen. Yep. Hey, nothing hey, wrong with it. We also have uh, some other announcements here in within the hour. Argentina has their dates and kickoff times to start World Cup qualifying. Now, remember, on the 16th of September, there's a match that is fairly, you know, I've heard, uh, you might have heard of it. There, there's a, a team from Miami coming to play Atlanta United. Mm. On the 8th, Argentina's national team is going to play Ecuador at the Monumental. And then on the 12th, they're going to play Bolivia at Estadio Hernando Siles. So you've got that occurring in the lead up to that game on the 16th. Argentina games and World Cup qualifying the week before Miami comes to Atlanta in front of a full house. So just keep those dates in mind as well. Um, Mega Millions is up to a billion bucks. And uh, I it's I got, was it Mega Millions I picked up yesterday? I think it was. But I, I know t- today I'm going to be in Carrollton, so I know I've got to get Mega Millions tickets when we go. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, Coventry City reportedly reached an agreement with Antalya Spore in the Turkish League. 9 million euro for Haji Wright. Mm. So so keep an eye on that one. Interesting pickup for uh, interesting pickup for Coventry City. And I know that a lot of you are sitting there and you're trying to figure out okay, who's going to the store to get the Mega Millions tickets. I see I see how this I see how this is working. The Twitch pitch, the collective our our soccer borg is trying to figure out who's going to make the mad dash to the store to get the tickets for Mega Millions, so everyone can can be uh, uh, a part of, of the the SDH Twitch Pitch Party Pool when you win the the billion bucks. And apparently, Fulham has gone pink for their new away kit. I, I'm not doing the group ticket buy because I'm not sharing my money. When when I get the billion dollars, it's going to be the People's Republic of a Leafy Stand. <laughs> Let's understand what's happening here. The, the Grand Marshal, the Grand Marshal of Leafy. Of the People's Republic is going to be this. Uh, that's happening. Just be ready. Yeah. Red Bulls have signed Colombian defender Juan Jose Mina. Uh, Carlos Vela, in a recent interview, has conceded that retirement is, quote, coming soon, end quote. What soon actually translates into, who knows? Uh, let's check up uh, gossip rumor and innuendo and what you can watch on the rest of the TVs today. Uh, Bayern Munich prepared to break their club record 80 million euro fee to sign Harry Kane. Harry Kane, 80 million euro. Uh, Tottenham and Bayern held talks in, in London yesterday, about 25 million apart in their valuations. Spurs could use the money raised by the Kane sale to bring in Barcelona midfielder Franck Kessie and France defender Clement Longla. Spurs are also eyeing Brennan Johnson if Kane is sold. That's from the four letter paper. Take the information at your own peril. Chelsea's uh, Todd Bowley faces competition from Barcelona in offering a player-plus cash deal to PSG for Mbappe. And I know that fans were disappointed that the Le Havre to Atlanta plane ticket did not have Mbappe as a part of the deal. Look, I I, I understand what Bowley's trying to do, and I, I really respect it, man. You know, mm-hmm. But you've got a, a kid on your team right now by the name of Nicholas Jackson who is going to cook. For you, mm-hmm. yeah. Let uh, 
sometimes you don't need all the big guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, let Real Madrid get Mbappe. Let them figure out what they're going to do. But all I'm saying is, if you are a Chelsea supporter, you've got some guys on your team right now that can go. So, uh... Cesar Luis Merlo is reporting that uh, Maxi Morales looks like he's returning to NYC. So we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Um, Chelsea also exploring a potential swap deal involving Lukaku and Dusan Vlahovic, according to Fabrizio Romano. Run that back? Fabrizio Romano. Chelsea are exploring a potential swap deal involving Romelo Lukaku and Dusan Vlahovic. Um, <laughs> there was a tagline on the movie uh, Aliens vs. Predator, which is, no matter who wins, we lose. Mm -hmm. um, I, look, Vlahovic has, been a, has not been a great signing for Juventus, but that, I, I think everybody knows by now that I give Juve like zero credit, respect, um, just generally speaking, I, I don't like them. Yeah. This, this isn't Blahovich's fault. Like any sort of downfall that happened there is not his fault. Mm -hmm. You have a manager in Allegri who was playing preseason games like a Champions League final where it was Hold up, we got a goal. Okay, everybody drop. Everybody, everybody, everybody back. And that that's not gonna help anyone who's playing in an attacking position. That's been his big beef with a lot of attacking players. Why Lukaku is dumb enough to think, and his agent are dumb enough to think that it would be any different for him than it was for Vlahovic, for any of these other players. I okay, good. Have fun. I, I, good luck to Lukaku this year. I'm dreading what it's going to be like for him, especially yeah. when they go to play Inter. Um, the 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 Kurva is out for blood now with him. Blahovic, he needs a change of scenery. I, I, I think he could be very successful. If you are a Chelsea supporter and you get Blahovic, you should be pretty darn happy because the kid can go. It's not – any sort of drop in production had nothing to do. He, he performed at Fiorentina. If you can perform at Fiorentina, you can perform anywhere. Unless your manager's Allegri and you drop every player, the water boy, the training staff behind the line when you go up a goal. Oh boy, yeah. So we got we got that. Uh, let's see. PSG rekindled their interest in Eintracht Frankfurt forward Randall Kolomowani. Chelsea's defender Levi Caldwell has signed a new six-year deal, according to our friends at the Guardian. Liverpool preparing an improved offer for Southampton's fifty million pound rated midfielder Romeo Lavia. Chelsea, Manchester United also keen. That's from the four-letter paper. Liverpool also closing in on a deal for Leicester City sixteen-year-old midfielder Trey Mione. West Ham are ready to walk away from a deal to sign James Ward-Prowse after having a second bid rejected for the 28-year-old. So James Ward-Prowse, who is a better, who is a free kick specialist and an incredible uh, shot maker on set pieces, rated at 40 million. But Romeo Lavia, who really wasn't scoring at Southampton, uh, is rated at 50. Uh, you explain that to me. West Ham have rejected a 17 million pound offer from Inter. For 24-year-old striker Gianluca Scamaccia. So West Ham's going to try to hang on to Scamaccia, uh, at least for, for more money. Burnley in talks with Arsenal over a season-long loan deal for midfielder Albert Sambi Lokonga. Austin Trusty could also leave the Gunner Sheffield United leading contenders to sign him. We talked about that one yesterday. PSG not prepared to accept an offer worth 30 million euro from Al Halal for Barati. Al Halal have also made a 140 million euro bid for Victor Osimhen from Napoli, according to our friends at Sky. Eh, that's 140. That could get De Laurentiis to. I don't know. De Laurentiis is sort of wacky. That the I think the the number is right. 
I think the dancing partner's not. Mm -hmm. So he he may say, no, I want I want something better for my player, and yeah. the money's right, but I want something better for my player. So uh, yeah, so you got to keep an eye on that one, especially when Al Halal's ready to drop one forty. Chelsea begun formal talks with Brighton over signing their keeper, Robert Sanchez. Brighton have not responded to Chelsea's opening offer. Chelsea want $45 million for Trevor Shalaba, who's set to leave after they agreed to a deal for Axel De Sassi. Inter Milan are interested in Chalaba, according to our friends at the Evening Standard. Everton Wolves in Bournemouth, keen on Che Adams from Southampton. Forrest want Rosario Central's 19-year-old Argentine striker Alejo Veliz but face competition from AC Milan and Barcelona could move for Atletico Madrid's Joao Felix if the French winger Usman Dembele joins PSG. That they said Milan's in uh, uh, the, for Joao Felix? Uh-huh, for no. uh, for Alejo Valise from Rosario Central. Yeah. Okay, okay, uh, that, okay, yes, okay, so, so yes. That, okay, that is fine. Yeah. That's fine, okay. Yeah. So you're ch- Nottingham Forest is chasing along with... Uh, AC Milan. Soccer on the tube today. Uh, BN, Copa Libertadores at 6 and 8 on BN and BN and Espanol. This is where you get to join our friends at Fanatis, FNTZ.co slash soccer down here. And you get to help out the network. You get to watch Fanatis and be a complete and total degenerate like me, watching TAISA, BN Sports uh, for the fans, uh, Goal TV. All that. That's available for you over at Fanatis, FNTZ.ca slash soccer down here. AC Milan and Barcelona is on ESPN at 11 o'clock tonight. We've got the Women's World Cup stuff. We talked about that at 3 and 7 a.m. Uh, Deportes, uh, ESPN Deportes is simulcasting Milan and Barcelona. Gold TV has the Peruvian Primera at 4. Telemundo and Universo, remember, they had the simulcast. The friendly for Milan and Barcelona is also on the Plus, and as well as on Peacock. Paramount Plus has the Argentine Primera at 6, Rosario Central and Central de Córdoba, and the Brasileiro at 7 with Santos and Fluminense. Remember, Brighton early tomorrow morning. Argentina, Sweden at 3 a.m., Jamaica, Brazil at 6, South Africa, Italy at 3 a.m., Panama, France is at 6. So that's your day for tomorrow with uh, what is on the tube tonight and tomorrow. Women's national team, goal of straw. They're the two seed. Had they won, they probably would have been the two seed as well just because of goal difference, because of the seven that were put on Vietnam. Last thoughts from you, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a guys, so much news. Good Lord. That's what I'm saying. You know? Uh, some – there's a, a kind of a disturbing thing I've been seeing across the socials, and I guess I shouldn't be terribly shocked by it, but – uh, there are some people who are saying that they're they're giving up their Atlanta United season tickets, and then um, some people who are, you know, very pushing back uh, substantially with that. Look, it, let people choose how they're going to be a fan. It, it, let, let people choose how they're going to be a fan. That it it does not change, you know, my purchasing decision one iota. If somebody is announcing they're leaving uh, the you know the season ticket holder world and you know buying tickets every now and then that's great uh, i wish them the best everybody's making the decision for different reasons but it, for the love of it, can we just try to be remotely friendly with each other can we do that you don't have to disagree with everything you can like the front office not like the front office you can like your fellow season ticket holders or not, but let's just try. The world largely sucks right now. It's the hottest summer on Earth's record. Um, the 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 freaking waters down uh, in Florida right now are a hundred degrees. The corals mm-hmm. dying off. Um, you know, there's pollution all over the place. Uh, people are losing their jobs uh, left, right, and center. It, it has been it, 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 the rent's too damn high. Let's let's just try to be somewhat patient with each other. If you can't be nice, at least attempt to be patient. Yeah. Okay. And and yes, bam, good for you. It's been a nice winter <laughs> for you. Okay. It's been a nice winter, bam. 
Yeah. All right. That, that, that's, you know, no, I'm just kidding, Bam. I love you, man. But just try to be polite and, and, and patient with each other if you can be. That's it. Just people are going to choose how they're going to be fans and how they're going to support. That's their choice, their decision. Okay. Yep. All right. I, I know if, look, if, Bam, if I had come to the Women's World Cup, I would have had fun with it. Mm -hmm. But the way that my bank account is set up, I can't mm -hmm. afford the airfare. Yeah. So I would love to have the airfare. I got no place to stay there anyway. You could, you could stay with Bam. I don't, man, Bam, Bam doesn't want some random American bald guy hanging out on his couch. People walking in like, who the hell is that? It's a, my friend from America. You know, like, okay, all right. Well, Bam, I appreciate that, man. I'm going to remember that next time. Yep. May have to go visit. Yep, we'll be back at it again tomorrow. Uh, normal start time. Hopefully, Dylan Butler can join us at ten o'clock. We've got uh, uh, Women's World Cup to talk about. We got MLS to talk about. We got Leagues Cup to talk about. We got stuff. Uh, also, as the week goes along, we'll try to catch up with our friends who are chasing championships in USL League Two up at Lions Bridge. Our friends at Ballard out in Washington, and our friends at Tulsa Athletic as well. As we get closer to uh, the end of the week, and so. Uh, remember, sources, sources, sources. Check your numbers. Check your sources. Ricky, I posted this on purpose. Latest from Turkey and Arda Beerben, one of the favorites to land Diego Rossi. Three others in MLS that are interested as well. So keep an eye on your sourcing. Once again, the window closes tomorrow, but once again, free agents can be had until the roster freeze on September 15th. So uh, for Nick, who's over there, me, I'm just John. Thanks to all of you guys on the Twitch pitch for hanging out with us today. We'll be back at it again 9.05 tomorrow morning where we get to talk stuff. That's the official term. So uh, play it safe, everybody. Mucha plot, y'all. Since it's the end of the show, that means I get to do this.